Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Wednesday the 3rd of March 2021. Today is the day after the fantastic match where we won 2-1 against Preston North End. The day after the match I like to do a stats video. But before we get into that let's take a look at this. What is this? This is from Lanx Live. It's about Jason Lumby. Apparently he uh, deleted his Twitter account because he was getting stick and... They're trying to make out here that it was Mill fans, but I had a little look myself and I didn't really see the, that much coming from Mill fans. I saw a lot of Preston uh, North End fans um, digging him out and not not being particularly nice about him. But if you go down here, you can see um, it says here after the midweek match, North End fans noticed and pointed out that Malumbi's Twitter handle. Uh, J Malumbi 15 no longer existed, with some suggesting there have been comments directed his way from Millwall supporters. Uh, so they're trying to dig out Millwall fans here, but I don't think, um, I didn't see anything myself, and I, like I said, most of this, the stuff was from, nastier stuff was from Preston North End fans. Millwall fans were posting stuff like, oh, he was in Billy, Pitchell, in Billy Mitchell's pocket all night. Um, someone put up uh, Billy Mitchell to... Jason Malumbi won, stuff like that. Some people saying, oh, well, f luck, thank God we didn't sign him and stuff like that. But I didn't, most of uh, the nastier stuff was from the Preston North End fans. So we could, I'm just pointed, wanted to show you that apparently uh, the Mill fans are getting getting blamed for Jason Malumbi getting a stick on Twitter and him deleting his uh, Twitter account. So let's just move on from that. And get into the stats. There we go. This is from Experimental Three Six One. This is the expected goals over the length of the match. And as you can see, like I said yesterday, that first half was really bad, and we can see that reflected in the graph here. Um, the blue line is Mill. The green line is Preston. And the the line goes along over the duration of the match. And any time the go the line goes up vertically, that is a shot or a chance on goal. And a circle is a goal. So we can see here, Mill had a shot earlier on, and they didn't have an another shot until about the 34th minute, which is uh, probably why the, the match, the first half was really, really bad. Um, but Preston didn't have that, that much either as well. But yet again, yet again, literally the second shot of the match, Preston score. It happened the other day as well. The first shot they had, Barnsley, they score. Um this this is this is becoming a real problem now. It needs to be sorted out. They need to sort this sh stuff out. This, they can't keep conceding the goal within the first ten minutes of every match and it with the first shot that the opposition has. It's, I don't know. Bart needs to do some extra, some have a an espresso or something. He needs to wake up. The defenders do need to do as well. It's not good enough. And you can see we we luckily pulled it back just before half time because that guy probably g'd the g the players up, gave them a bit of hope. And as you can see in the second half, bang, they just went for it. Shot after shot after shot after shot. Looks like a stairway. Stairway to heaven. And you see, it had probably six of one and a half dozen the other. I told you yesterday, Preston don't draw a lot of games. They don't draw a lot of away games. They either win or they lose. So it looks like here, they may have tried to just defend for most of the second half. And they failed, or we forced them to defend because they didn't have that flat line. They didn't have a shot till injury time, from like the 58th minute till the 95th minute, or no, it was 91 minutes, wasn't it? So they probably tried to defend, and it didn't work out. Did not work out for them. And we soon we all try and do that and come on suck. So um. So there you go, you see that there. Um, they give the the uh, expected goals totals as Mill 
uh, 1.1 to Preston's 0.4. So we we were the better team in the game, no no doubt about that. But if you watch the game, you probably already uh, know that. Uh, this is uh, infogold.net. They, if you look in the middle, they give the expected goals as 1.65 to Millwall, 0.4 to Preston North End. Um, we can see here Chad Evans scoring, then Scott Malone. Uh, Malumbi got booked really cynical, um, like a rugby tackle on Bennett when he was about to break away. Um, so that was justified. And uh, George Evans got one, a yellow card in injury time for t um, time wasting. Um, Mason Bennett's goal in 86 minutes, which was absolutely delightful, wasn't it? Um, let's, let's have a look at the lineups. Who did they give the ratings to? So we can see, wow. A plethora of Millwall players in green. Hutchinson, Malone, Wallace, Bodvarsson, Bennett. Bennett, man of the match, 8.56. That was pretty, fun, pretty, pretty good game from uh, Mason Bennett. Pretty good game. Um, low ratings for Cooper, really? And Biakuski. Hmm. Is that because of the goal got, that got conceded? Or I don't know what that's for. But still, six is it's a, it's a low six. Let's not beat around the bushes. This is not a decent uh, score. Uh, let's take a look at the substitutes. Um, pretty low scores from the subs as well. They were late on though, so that's actually to get a score to come in, in the ninety second second minute in a ninety fifth minute ninety five minute game and to still post a score. It's pretty good. Um, so, yeah, let's have. You can see that there. Let's move on to stats. Um, the numbers, the number stats. So possession, they had more, fifty-five to forty-five. But in pretty much everything else, we had the um, lion share. Uh, three to attempts on target, seven to four attempts off target, block shots three to zero. Goalkeeper saves one and one pass is pretty much similar. Um, four three five for us three oh seven completed. So our passing was more accurate it seems. So maybe the players are getting used to the manky pitch on the den. Maybe that might be a good thing going forward. Well, the games we've got coming up, we did, we outdid them in corners, we outdid them in offsides, uh, we outdid them in fails. And yellow cards was even at 1 1. Let's take a look at the map. Where were the shots? So the shot, the little um, dots are the dots are the shots. Uh, yellow, the yellow dot is the goal. So you can see all through the match, they did not have any clear cut, grade A stonking good chances. They had tiny little dots is a means very low chance of scoring um percentage wise you can see here with the the goal they got that was a seven percent chance but so maybe that's why be a got luck with such a low mark should have probably done better with that and you can see from even better um from Millwall's one the see the little yellow dot um far away from the goal that was, that was malone's wonder strike that, let's have a click on that and see what that was. That was 2%. So if you take that shot in that circumstance 100 times, it's going to go in two. So that's pretty amazing there from uh, Scott Malone. But we also had uh, three decent chances round and about the penalty spot. One of them was the one that went in. That was Mason Bennett's header. The other one was Mason Bennett again, 67. And... The other one was Jed Wallace. Okay, so there you go. See all the chances there. Um, but, like I said, first half was rubbish. And there you go, the first half. Awful. 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 Moving to the second half. Massive improvement by Millwall. But still awful for Preston. So that's that's what did it, that second half. That um, When it got G'd up. Let's move on now to this. This is whoscored.com. Um, this is the match report. Let's see what they say. They say, Camille Wall, strength, stole the ball often from the opposition, 
We're effective at creating goal scoring opportunities from long shot situations. We're effective at creating goal scoring opportunities from counter attacks and we're strong at finishing. Um, weaknesses for me all lost possession often, gave away a lot of free kicks around the box, were caught offside often, committed a high number of individual errors. Okay, Styles played with wit for tack down the left side, favoured long, uh, favoured through balls. Preston were effective at creating goal scoring opportunities from long shot situations, lost possession often, committed a high number of individual errors, favoured long shots, attack down the left side. So, and you can see here, our conversion rate for chances was worse than Preston's. But when you have a ton of chances, you're going to score more goals with the same or a worse conversion rate. And you can see here, we had 13 shots, two goals, that's 15% conversion rate. Preston had six shots, one goal, that's 16% conversion rate. So there you go, the more, the more, the more you shoot, the more you score. Ipso facto. Thus it is proven. Time and time again, if you watch these videos, go back and watch the other stats videos, it is proven. Here's, uh, you look on the left hand side, there's the, um, how the players lined up. Um, quite amazingly, and I don't know why, um, you can see Jake Cooper is actually playing further forward than Ryan Woods. What the hell is Ryan Woods doing? You see in the second half when he went further forward, and he, he set up two of Mason Bennett. Was it? Oh, he set up Jed Wallace's chance, and he set up uh, Mason Bennett's goal. So why, why match after match after match, is uh, Ryan Woods playing like he's some kind of sweeper, super sweeper, like he's low, low time Mateus? Why does he do that? He's more like a Peter Beardsley style. Um, I would imagine I don't remember that much about Pizzi to be honest with you but he's that kind of like forward player he's not defensive God's sake anyway um, let's carry on carry on carry on we're going to move on now to also on whoscored.com here we go graphical representation of the numbers of the game you look at the badges, you see the averages for the whole uh, starting 11 and substitutes. 6.86 for Millwall, 6.29 for Preston. And that is a, quite a big gap. 0.6% uh, um, roughly. That is that is quite a big gap. So we were the better team. Um, best player according to this, this uh, website, uh, Marlon Romeo, 7.4. With uh, Bennett only getting seven, oh, a lot of players getting seven point two. Uh, Bennett, Malone, Hutchinson, seven point two. Cooper, seven point one. Wood, seven point one. Pretty decent scores uh, on this website all round for all Millwall players. Just Bart Biakowski getting a low a mark. Um, there you go. Um, okay, and they've they've stuck the error. You see the E on the um, Preston keeper. They've gave it gave him there. He's the lowest ranked player on on the team. Four point seven on the on the whole pitch. Four point seven. But if you look at the numbers at the bottom, um shots possession, pass success, we pretty much were better in all of the categories. Uh let's have a look at the shots. So you can see here yep. That's good to see. The shots are shared around. Bennett with four. Uh, Bodvarsson with two. Wallace with three. Oh, yeah. Bennett hit the woodwork. He did hit the woodwork. That was that other chance that I showed you in the near the penalty spot. He hit, hit the whole woodwork with that. So he had four shots. One of them went in. And one hit the bar. That's pretty decent. Malone only had two shots. One of them went in. That's even more decent. Rod Varsten with two. What is with three? There you go. And Woods and Romeo with the assists. Um, even Hutchison had a shot there. May have been an header. Um, probably. Probably was. Um, moving on to possession. Total uh, minutes of possession. Percentage. So, Whiteman. For 
Yeah, White Whiteman for for Preston on the right hand side. It, it, this is a bit weird because Mill were in red and Preston in blue, but that's how they do it for home and away teams. Um, Whiteman had nine point one percent of the match possession. So did George Evans had nine point one percent match possession. So, but. The rest of the Preston forwards did not do a lot at all. They did not do much. They didn't. But they weren't on the ball. They weren't on the ball at all. And neither, to be fair, neither are our forwards except for Wallace, if you can call him a forward. Um. And the midfield, um, not really on the ball that much either. It was the game was being run by Hutchison and Evans, and and some and Cooper as well, so, which is usual. Except for Barnsley, Barnsley, they pressed us so high up that they they didn't have time to get on the ball. Um, we weren't allowed to do that. Uh, moving on to pass success percentage, and here we go. Billy Mitchell eighty three. Even better than the. Uh, Ryan Wood, um, yeah, Ryan Wood's 82. So there you go. Billy Mitchell, superstar. Why hasn't he been playing? I know he was injured, but that's pretty decent all around there. Hutchison is a bit low. That might have been, may have been because of long balls. Uh, let's move on. Dribbles. We have more dribbles than M86 in here. Is how it's spread out. Go dribbling down the right hand side. So even though they said we were attacking down the left wing, all of the dribbles seem to be from players who were formed up on the right hand side. Let's move on to aerials one. Absolutely stonked it, stonked it. Forty to twenty nine. Hutchinson ten. Evans eight. Bennett four. One of them was the goal. Bodvarsson six. Cooper seven. Everyone except for Malone, Woods, Romeo and Bielkowski won an aerial. You love to see it, don't you? You love to see it. Tackles, more than them, 16-13. Not a lot going on up front. But Mitchell, 5. Romeo, 4. That is impressive. Corners, yeah, we, we, we outdid them in corners. Dispossessed. 13 to 11, so Bennett was, uh, was dispossessed five times. That's not too good, but anyway, let's move on. Let's have a look at the player stats. Mostly what you've just seen, but there's a few more pieces that I want to go through with you now. So they've given... A, don't know why they've given Star Man to Marlon Romeo. I do not know why. Having just looked at what I've just looked at, I can't really see why. Though he's had one assist, but his pass accuracy is not the highest. Um, but pretty that's pretty decent to have six players seven plus. So half of the team were seven out of ten and up. And so the, yeah, and the two substitutes were. Higher rated than the keeper. That's pretty decent. Let's have a look at this and see why. Why the hell Romeo got got man of the match from these leaders? The so touches, as usual, the defenders have the touches. All of the top five are the, def uh, the defense. Um, most with George Evans. So, yeah. Bart only 14 touches. Not really involved. Uh, probably that's why Bart's score is so low. Maybe he didn't have that much to do. He didn't really have anything to do with that shot that come barreling at him. And he didn't do much about that. But anyway. Uh, offensive. Let's uh, look at unscheduled touches. So this is uh, poor control. Poor control. Quite high. Six for Malone, six for Bodvarsson, five for Bennett. That is quite high. Let's move on to 
we're going to look at now we're going to look on defensive let's have a look and see if we can figure out why Romeo got man of the match four so four tackles but then why is but Billy Mitchell had more tackles than him and he had a higher pass success percentage so why is he not he scored not higher than Marlon Romeo's mm, okay never mind never mind passing so who had the most passes George Evans with 80 then a bit of a drop to Hutchinson then another bit of a drop to Jake Cooper and then another bit of a drop to Billy Mitchell. Billy Mitchell had actually had more passes than uh, Ryan Woods, which is good to see. Um, so he had more passes than him, he had a high accuracy rate. Okay. Um, so Bart, Bart Bierkowski, 10 passes, 60% accuracy. Six long balls, two of them were accurate. So he didn't. He didn't. That's why he scored so low. He didn't. He didn't have much to do. So he had either six, six long balls. That would include goal kicks and uh, probably free kicks for offside. But uh, Preston were not offside. I think we see that we had five offside, so they're zero. So that's goal kicks and just fouls and stuff. So if he's only had to do that six times, there's not really much he's had to do in that game. So that's why he scores so low. So you got to look at the stats and see is there's story behind the stats, which it's okay for me because I saw the game yesterday, but um, trying to match it up and figure out the stats and what they mean. We can see here long balls. Yeah, George Hammond's 27 long balls, 13 were accurate. But Hutchinson, yeah, that's why his score was so low. 21 long balls from Scott, for Sean Hutchinson. Only five of them were accurate. Ouch. But Jay Cooper was arguably worse. I don't know. Seven and zero. Marlon Romeo, seven long balls. Only one accurate. How the hell have they given... Can, can someone at this website tell me how the hell you've given Marlon Romeo a man of the match? Seeing as his passes weren't accurate, his long balls weren't accurate, and he had the second most tackles, not the first most tackles. Surely Billy Mitchell should have got man of the match. Am I am I crazy here? I don't know, let me know in the comments. Judging by the stats, Billy Mitchell should have got man of the match. Judging by what I saw, I, um, watching the game yesterday, I would give him giving it to Mason Bennett. But I don't know how the hell who scored dot com have given this to. Marlon Romeo. Um, what else are we looking at? No, we're not looking at anything. We've looked at everything. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching. Bye.